Hello, we continue with uh, the series of lectures about the paper of uh, Terence Tao about the collapse uh, conjecture. And in this class, we will um, basically prove uh, um, the proposition I stated in the first part of this lecture. We prove in this class, uh, but assuming some other thing, okay? And then we will prove this other thing on the next class. Okay. <clears throat> so, first we start with some definition. So, the first definition is the following. Um, so, we let... Sirac n be the following random variable fn of geom 2 to the n with mod 3n. Okay, so geom 2 was just a geometrical distribution on the positive integers. Um, geom n is just a vector with n uh, identically. Um, uh, identically and independent distributed random variables in each entry of the vector. Fn, if you don't remember what it is, let me write here in a moment. So we call so, uh, so let's recall. Uh, so Fn of a vector B is um, um, from i equals 1 to n of 3 to the n minus i and 2 to the minus b i n again the b i n uh, is by convention any b i j is just given a vector b it's just a sum from let's say uh, l from i to j of the vector of the entries of the vector okay uh, so that was the function b, and this was involved in the computation of the n iterate of the of the speed up or Syracuse collapse map. So, uh, so s n of a vector, uh, let's say uh, m of a number m, is just uh, three to the n divided by two to a certain vector, and that was uh, the normal certain vector, and that was this vector ax of m uh, times m plus f of this vector, and here is, uh, oh sorry, this is fn, fn of this vector. And the vector A is just uh, the exponents of the powers of 2 that you have to divide uh, the 3n plus 1 function so that you get uh, the iterates of the 3n plus 1 function so that you get uh, the function Sn defining the odd number. So this is for every odd number and An of M is just Nu 2, which is the largest uh, exponent in a power of 2 um, that divides uh, 3m plus 1 and then the second one is 3sm plus 1 and so on. Okay, that's the vector A it's, and it stops at n. It stops at nu 2 3sm minus 1 of m plus 1. Okay? Okay, so these are the functions I want you to, to recall. So that definition here starts making sense. Oh, also the geom function is just a geometrical, it's just a random thing you should recall here as well. Geom uh, n is just a random vac uh, variable, which is, uh, is a random variable, which is... Uh, uh, z plus to the n valued. So z plus is positive integers for me, 
and the probability that g on 2n equals some vector b is defined as 2 to the minus. And again, I'm using here the convention that this is always the one norm whenever I use for a vector, and whenever I use any other norm, I will explicitly say. Okay, so these are the, the things that you should recall. Um, But still there is some missing detail, because fn, if you look, fn is not really an integer function, therefore you can't really take mod 3n. And the way we do it is actually, uh, so, observation. Um, uh, so fn, you see that fn is a function from uh, z plus n, to z, even z plus a half, where you adjoin uh, a half in the integer, so this is just some m, sorry, it's just some m divided by 2 to the l, let's say m is a positive integer and l is greater or equal than 0. Okay, you see that that's uh, your function. So whenever I'm using mod n, I will use mod 3n or mod uh, 3n. Whenever I use that, if it's an integer, then you know what it is. But if it's an integer divided by 2, then what I mean is that I'm mapping 1 over 2 to the L, this rational number. I'm mapping to the inverse mod, so the inverse of 2 to the L mod 3n. So the mod 3n map here will denote this, okay? And again, 2 to the n, uh, 2 is a primitive root mod 3l, which means you can always invert in, the, uh, in, in this residue class for any power 3. So there is a well-defined inverse, and that's what I'm doing, okay? Okay, great. So right out of the bet, bet, or bet, I don't know how you say, what's to say. Um, anyway, uh, I will propose two problems. So the first problem is which is actually a lemma in, in Tao's paper. It's not hard to show. Uh, and I don't think we're gonna use this in, this in this class, but anyway, it's nice to know now since we just defined the thing. Um, let's see, x. So what's the probability of Sirac of n plus one being equal to some congruence class? It's equal to the sums of the a's equals 1 to twice 3 to the n, such that 2 to the a x is actually 1 mod 3, and this is 2 to the minus a probability that Sirac n equals 2 to the a x minus 1 over 3. When you see this number model, Modulo, um, um, three n. When you see this number mod three n, then that's what happens. And the second problem, oh, and I have to divide this thing by one minus twice minus two times three to the n. So one hint for this problem is uh, not really a, re a hint, but uh, um, is uh, yeah you have to use uh, Fermat uh, little theorem, which is that uh, um, 
which is that um, so use which is that oh it's uh, if a is if a is prime with b then a to the p is uh, congruent to one, which one? Oh, no, what did I forget? Leave this one. Let's see, uh, let's see, if I take five here and then this is three, so three to the five is, um, maybe five is too big. Uh, let's say this is three, and I put a two here, so two cubed is eight, and eight is congruent to two, so this would be eight. So yeah, so it's p minus one. P minus one congruent to one. Okay, and the generalization of this is that if you put anything here, let's say if you put the number n here, then you put the numbers which are prime with n, so it's phi of n. Okay, so if you use Fermat's uh, um, uh, little theorem, you you will see that, for instance, that so the way you, you have to do it is that you see that um, the way that you have to apply, you see that uh, um, uh, oh, there is a typo here. So two. Uh, so I want to put two here, and here I want to put n as a power of three. So two. To, which is this number here, to phi of 3n is congruent to 1 mod 3n. Okay, but this guy is exactly twice 3, oh, this is n plus 1, uh, 1 n plus 1 here, and 1 n plus 1 here. And this guy here is exactly uh, 2 times 3 to the n. So you know uh, what power you have to put on 2, so you get a number which is congruent to 1 uh, uh, mod 3n plus 1. And that will uh, play a role in this calculation. Okay. We always forget what's the, the, if it's a to something equal to a or a to something equal to 1 mod. Always forget. Okay. Uh, what else? Second problem. So this is problem one. Problem two, that's also not so hard. If k is less than equal to n, then Sirac n mod 3k. So now you have mod 3n, and then you, you identify these numbers with uh, numbers from 1 to 3n, and then you take mod uh, 3k. So that will give you a new random variable, and the random variable is identically distributed with Sarek k, okay? Which is a nice property that will be crucial in the very last uh, calculation we will do in this class. Uh, and a hint to that, maybe is there a hint to, to this thing? No, there's no hint. Okay. So now I will define another quantity and I will state a new proposition. So, so let, let's say you have a, um, uh, it would be better to write in this form FL, which would be a certain um, sequence of numbers, any numbers, uh, indexed by. But it is mod 3n. Okay, suppose you have a sequence of numbers indexed by this. So indexed by number from one numbers from 1 to 3n if you like. Okay. Then you would define the oscillation m n of f then for m less or equal than n define 
But that'll be the oscillation. So what's the oscillation? I will give a, a formal definition and I'll explain what's the idea here behind. So that's the definition of the oscillation. It's an L1 norm, if you wish, of certain quantities. And these quantities, what you're doing is, for instance, suppose you're doing, let's say, mod 27. So you have like 1, 2, 3, up to 27. And you have some numbers. And you can think of these numbers as being a probability distribution, probability of something being congruent to that number uh, mod 3n, for instance. So to that number mod 27. I suppose you have 25 here, and you have these numbers here. You have f25 here. Okay, and then you want to compare with uh, lower. You want to know if this sequence is well distributed. This fn sequence is well distributed in smaller scales. So in, in smaller scales here. So suppose I get a smaller scale, which would be the next. Well, let's say mod 9. So what you would do here is you take the difference, mod 9, so that would be 1 over, so 3 minus 2, so it would be 1 over 3, and in here you will do every number, you write every number which is congruent to 25 mod 9. Well, 25 mod 9 is uh, a 7, so you would do 7 plus... Uh, 16 plus 25. So f of these things, of course, f. Okay. So this will be one summation inside this thing. So you do this. And then you will add some other thing. And now maybe instead of 25, you consider 26 and you do the same thing. So you do for every uh, residue class mod 27, and that will be the oscillation. So if the oscillation is small, you're saying that this number here, which uh, you can think of a probability of being 25, let's say, it's comparable with the average of the probability of being 7, 16, and 25 in a smaller, smaller scale. So if this, the oscillation is small, means that... Um, um, it means that uh, uh, f is kind of a, a uniformly distributed in smaller scales as well. Okay, that's the idea behind the, the oscillation uh, measurement. Um, so, uh, so proposition. Uh, which is proposition twenty eight. Uh, in my notes, uh, so this problem actually is the lemma in my notes. So it's this is lemma twenty seven. This guy here. So that will be this is proposition twenty eight. So let's f n of l be the probability of Sirac in the L. Okay? So uh, then, for every M less or equal than N, the oscillation M in of F uh, is, oh, for every, then for every a positive n m less or equal than n this holds true and greater equal to n of course m less or equal than n okay So in another, in other words, let me rewrite this thing. 
uh, this would be, so what I'm saying is that is the sum nz of the probability of Sirac in B, uh, BL minus so what is this here? This sum here is 1 over 3n minus m of what? So computing for every L prime more 3n, I'm summating all these probabilities. Okay, so this sum here is just one single probability, which is the probability of Sirac uh, n b um, congruent to L, okay, but not L mod 3n, but L mod 3n, okay, so, so as, a, as in the example, L here would be 25, uh, uh, and M would be 2, so you computing, you're computing, you're testing where, where are the numbers, uh, uh, such that Sirac is equal to, um, let's say, 25 mod 9. So these numbers, the possibilities will be 7, 16, 25. And you add up all these probabilities, so you compute this. Okay. Uh, so that is less than 1 over m to the a. Okay. Um, Sure, but then we use the problem. The problem is saying that Sirac in mod 3k is Sirac k. And I'm doing mod 3n here. Therefore, I could just put an m here and instead the n is an m. So the probability of Sirac m equals, and now we just do L mod 3m. Okay, so now this will be a residue class mod 3m, and this is has a range, which is the mod, uh, residue class mod 3m. But that's what I'm showing, using all the problem, okay? And this is what I'm, we're going to use later, because what we're going to use later is that uh, we will have a sum with these things here, times some coefficients, and we want to replace that sum uh, with this term here, times some coefficients. Okay. So this allows you to go from uh, a big scale, which will be n, to a smaller scale, which will be m, and don't and you don't lose a lot. You only lose something like one over m over a. Okay. Okay. So what we're gonna do in this class now is use assuming proposition twenty eight, which we're going to show it's implied by another proposition. And that will be the final one, which we, we're going to prove later. Uh, assuming 28, we get proposition 24, which was the one we used in the first class. Okay, so let me just erase this board. We call you what proposition 24 is. And start proving it, assuming proposition 28. But this paper of, of Derrida is giving me a lot of work because one, I'm sorry to say the paper is not well written, um, and, but uh, the arguments and the methods are very awesome, very nice, but uh, I have to kind of uh, dig deep in the calculation, so I can extract something which I think is reasonable for a master's student. Okay, so let me recall what the proposition, so let me call uh, proposition 24. So what proposition 24 is, um, so it had, so just informally speaking, you, you have to look exactly to the, to the proposition in the previous video. 
and he has one statement which is this one and this uh, for y equals x to the alpha or y equals x to the alpha squared and actually this one here I forgot to put it when I stated the proposition but I, I in the end of the part one of this lecture I actually uh, observed that I should put this back there okay so and recall that ny is just uh, the law of distribution over the odd numbers from y to y to the alpha all of the odd numbers um, and second um, that the total variation of px and uh, y uh, yeah this sorry this is x this is x alpha and the first passage below x of the random variable and x alpha squared the total variation between these two random variables is something like log x to a certain small power so here, so just to remind the convention again, so C will be some small quantity that can change from, not only in line to line, but equation to equation. So we have some, some C here, and I put some lesser equal than some other C, and this, this the same C, but the, the C on both sides could be different. I will try to avoid this as much as possible, only put from line to line, but uh, it will happen anyway. Um, what else? An alpha is always to be regarded as a number which is bigger than one, but as close to one as we like. Okay. And alpha. So alpha is a number bigger than one, as close to one as we like. And similar with c not as close to zero as we like. Okay. So that would be the convention. So that's proposition 24, uh, and with that we showed the, the, the main theorem using the proposition 24. So we now we show that 28 implies 24. So let me to prove that prop 28 implies prop 24. Okay, so first I'll prove one and then I'll prove two. So two is much harder than one, um, but still would need some work. Um, and one thing, maybe one thing you could uh, um, Yeah, one thing you can keep in mind is that um, one thing you can keep in mind here is that um, so here is a probability distribution. Um, um, one thing, just an observation about this. This would be something. This would be one over m. If if we get an odd number in this interval, the probability that this distribution equals that odd number will be just, uh, let's say L, will be just 1 over L times divided by the, 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 the sum of the harmonic numbers, uh, sum of 1 over uh, J for all J's in this interval. And that is something more or less like a log, okay? So it's something like, uh, if you want to put in precise terms, it would be something like uh, alpha minus 1 over 2 log Y. So that would be the probability of ny being equal to L, if L is a number in that interval, okay? Roughly, with a certain error, which is the case like 1 over, I will, when I use this again, I will mention it again. But just to keep in mind that 
This is the kind of stuff we are summating when we're using this probability distribution. It's one over L, if L is in an interval, odd number in the interval, and times this uh, divided by this log thing. And always keep in mind that the constant multiplying in the log can be as small as possible if alpha is close to 1. Okay. So what's the idea here behind to prove I? So let's prove I first. So we have this event that... Uh, so what's this event? Tx is the first moment that a number gets below x. Being equal to infinity means I'm collecting here, uh, 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 I'm computing the probability of the guys, uh, uh, I'm, I'm measuring here the event that there is some guy, uh, of, of the guys in this interval that actually don't get below x, uh, can never. Okay, and that should decay, uh, like uh, like polynomially like. Okay, so one way to do that is well, first by this alone is hard to control. So one one th one thing we would do is that we uh, realize that when x is large, uh, uh, this event here implies some other event. Okay. And that other event, we can actually get uh, some good inequality zone. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Okay, so I want I want to uh, uh, understand something when this x is large. So it implies a certain other event which I can actually control. So suppose that x is a random variable, which is odd valued. Okay, so we start like this. Um, so first of all, let me just do a, a, an estimate on this. Well, this is the function that allows us, which in the computation of uh, the n iterate of the collapse map, and it's just summation from i equals one to n of three to the n minus i and two to uh, minus. Um, a one n of x when a one is that one is that one yeah a one i of x well but these guys here are always uh, each entry here is an integer greater than equal than one so you can trivially uh, uh, bound these things here by um, uh, by i so you have something like three to the n in summation of one over six to the i so this is O of 3 to the n, okay? It's easy to realize that. Okay, so basically when you have S, Sn of x, the collapse map, this will be involved in the sum, so this is basically just 3 to the n, 2 to the nx times uh, x plus O of 3 to the n. Okay, so in a way, the only thing that matters is this first part here, at least for this calculation we are doing. Uh, so if we want to know that for some n this is actually less or equal than x, it would be nice to control this function here. So we already have you, the event we have to control. We have to control the event where this is, uh, let's say, greater, uh, let's say, great, greater or equal than some theta times n. Okay, that's what we have to control. And when this is uh, less or equal than some constant times n, or greater or equal than some constant times n. So that's the event we have to control. I want to do this I think I test. Okay. So what's that constant? multiplying n that I was talking about, so that's the right approach. So let me define the event E as the event that this is greater than theta n, where theta, I'm going to take theta equals log on base 2 of 3 plus 0 log 1, 
but the only important thing is that uh, theta is uh, above log of base 2 of 3 uh, and 1. Okay? And, uh, sorry, not a 1 and 2. Theta is already greater than 1. Okay? That's the important thing. Um, so if if E happens, of course, then you know that S N of X is less or equal. Oh, by the way, you can actually prove well this is not hard to show. You can actually show that this is not only O of 3 to the N, but if you summate 1 over 6 uh, to the I um, from I equals 1 to infinity, you get uh, 1 over 5, is that right? Yeah, one, you get 1 over 5, which is less than 1. So this is less than 3 to the n, okay? So you could actually say that this is uh, uh, less or equal than 3 to the n. So if this is happening, then you just write this thing in terms of in as powers of 2, so you get to this minus theta um, times n times x plus 3 to the n. And this guy here, by the choice, is just minus, uh, minus 0.1 nx plus 3 to the n. Okay. So now you... I mean, theta could be anything. Well, now you see why this theta has to be something like this. So you get something negative here. Okay, that is fine. Uh, so now let uh, let x be in y. Okay. So what you can do? Well, this is less or equal than well. The worst that it can be that's y is x to the alpha squared. So this is alpha cubed. Okay, so, so then you get that um, S N of X is less or equal than 2 to the minus 0 0.1 N X to alpha cubed plus 3 to the N. Um, so now I will choose Um, n to be, and n will throughout the proof be fixed now. It will be a function of x. It will be 0 0.1 log on base 2 of x the floor. Okay? It will be fixed. It will be this guy throughout the proof. Okay. Okay. Well, suppose that that happens. So, what we get then, then we get that Sn of Ny is less or equal than, let's replace everything here, we got 2 to the minus 0 0.1 plus, uh, then I replace x, uh, n, sorry, n by this, I replace n by this, I get, um, uh, what do I get? Yes, I get 0 0.01. Yes, I get x to minus 0 0.01 plus uh, plus 0.01 Oh, there's a typo here. Plus alpha cubed, of course. Plus alpha cubed. And then in here we have uh, 3 to the n, which I will write as uh, 2 to the n log on base 2 of 3, but n is bounded by this, so this will be uh, 0 0.1 and log, so and, and log, so it will be 0 0.1 times this x, so 0 0.1 log on base 2 of 3. Okay. 
then you realize that, that if alpha is small, so, so I always assume that, and I can always make alpha as small as you want. If alpha is small, and close to 1, because alpha is always greater than 1, so alpha is close to 1, this thing here is uh, less than 1, if alpha is sufficiently close to 1. And this thing is already less than 1. So this inequality here, x, holds if uh, x is greater or equal than some, depending on alpha, to 1. If x is large enough, then for this, again, n will be fixed equal that. For this choice, uh, Sn actually gets below x. So therefore, so, uh, um, so we conclude that, uh, so in particular we conclude that the probability that Tx of Ny is equal to infinity will be, will be what? Well, uh, there will be two choices. Either uh, this is greater than theta, or this is less or equal than theta. But the other case, uh, if it's greater than theta, it implies that it gets below x for x sufficiently large. So therefore, there is only one possibility, which is this less or equal than theta n. Uh, and therefore, this, therefore, let me see, therefore, this event uh, t uh, x and y equals infinity implies the uh, the complement of that event. And this for large x. Okay? So for now on, and this will be another convention, I will not see more large x anymore. Uh, when in, whenever I have an application or a calculation, you have you always to think, well, maybe that's not true, but for large x will be true, okay? So I will always mean for a large enough x. Okay, so this implies this. So I can bound the probability equals infinity for large x by this. Okay. We now we appeal to, uh, if you recall, we appeal to Proposition 26, which I actually proved in the last class, which roughly says that if, if I have a random variable, which is mod 2m is close to be uniform, distributed, uh, in the residue class is mod 2m, oh, this is supposed to be odd, 2mz, then, um, then that implies that a n of x is close to be geom uh, n. And this happens if we have, for instance, let's say, m, m should be slightly bigger than uh, 2 times n. So for instance, if m is greater than equal to 3 times n, it should work. Okay, so that was the... the, the the idea of Proposition 26, and this idea was made rigorous in terms of total variation, okay? And the mistake we, we, we're making here is always proportional. Here it should be 1 over 2 to the m, and here it will be some 2 to the minus c times n for some small c. Okay, so let's use this now, so let me erase that word. We're almost done with part 1. So, uh, the problem, it turns out that by 
it's not that hard and it can be confusing, but if you do it slowly and use that, uh, I, will, I will mention it here in a moment, but uh, um, the problem is a shoe that Suppose you have Z, and Z is greater or equal than, uh, let's say, then 2 to the 3M. Okay? And I'll face something greater than 1. Then, the proposition 26 is satisfied when x equals n y. Uh, so basically, so I'm stating here the problem first in generic sense. And so, by proposition, so I could apply proposition 26. So, what is uh, the setting here? So, uh, so, uh, so next is verify that if I take z equals y, okay. So why, uh, what is y? Why is like, oh, is, a, is it an x to the alpha or x to the alpha squared, which is um, uh, greater or equal than x, for instance, and, um, and I'm gonna take, um, Yes, and then I'm going to take um, m in this proposition. I'm going to take m equals 3n. And again, n is always this guy. Okay. So you need to verify that y is greater or equal than um, uh, um, oh, for, I can do it right now. So y is greater or equal than x, uh, it has to be, the question is, is it greater than 2 to the 3 times 3, so the 9n? Well, let's see, what is n? Well, n is roughly 0 0.1 log 2 base, log of x in base 2, so this is 0 0.9, this is roughly x to 0 0.9. So it holds. Okay. So verify if z equals y and m equals 3n, that particular n there. Um, then we have this. Then this holds. Okay. And so I, so I, the proposition with, with the proposition allows me whenever I have an m here, an m here, and the variation is less or equal than the m, the two to the minus m, I can divide this m by three. So that's why I'm putting three m here. So I can apply the proposition, and proposition will say that total variation of a n of n y and g on two to the n. So that's the problem. So basically you only have to prove this first part and the other part is just, uh, as I said, just a verification that satisfies this and it's just, just straightforwardly apply the proposition. Great. Uh, so, so now we just need to bound this, this stuff here. Uh, and then what you do is, since the 
total variation has this, we go ahead and bound by using the total variation and submit. So this will be bounded by above by g ohm of 2 of n, let's say equal to theta n um, plus uh, 2 to the minus cn. Okay, and what is 2 to the minus cn? Well, it's x to a certain small power because n is like log of x. So this is some x to the minus c. Now I just have to show that this is also uh, x to the minus c. And the way we do it is we use the turn off type bound. So this probability is less or equal than um, the probability of oops, probability of uh, 2 minus theta and less or equal than g ohm of 2 to the n minus the average of this sum, which is 2 n. And this is just because of the triangle inequality, because if this is true, then that is true. If, if this thing is true, then um, If this thing is true, then that means that um, uh, uh, what I'm saying is, is that uh, let me just manipulate this so, so you can see more more straightforwardly. Um, suppose that this and uh, suppose that. Um, Suppose that this thing is true. Okay, so what I'm claiming that this probability is greater equal than that. Okay, let me show that in a moment. And what is this thing? This thing, uh, uh, um, this thing is just measuring uh, how far away from the average uh, this sum of random, identically independent distributed random variables is. And this is by the turn of type bound is something like so. Uh, is something like 2 to the minus cn. Well, if, if, you really, if you put an n here, it should be something like e to minus, and we appear this number, 2 minus theta um, um, n, and there will be a squared over n, and there will be something like e minus 2 minus theta n. And then this n here, um, Yes, right. So these two here cancels with this n here, and you just get a, a linear growth in in the in the exponent and the exponential, and the same as here. But n is like log x, so this would be just x to a somewhat small power. So if you use the turn off bound, so this was uh, that again. I did this bound on the previous class. That's what we get. Okay, so it, it remains to to prove why this is true. Well, I just I just need to show that if that happens, then this happens. Oh yes, I was doing the opposite direction. Not this implies this. I just need to show that this implies this. But this implies this because it, just a manipulation. I mean, this definitely implies this because it's the exact. Uh, Oh, sorry, this definitely, uh, that's why I'm confusing this thing. This definitely implies uh, this, because it's, ex it's just the exact same thing. This 2n cancels with this 2n, and you reverse the inequality. So this is equal. From okay, well, this to this is equality. But you get less or equal if you put this, of course. And that is by the turn off type bond, okay? Great. So that was the end of, of, of item one. Um.
not that complicated. And note that we didn't use the proposition I stated. So the item one was okay without the proposition. It's really item two which, where we have a problem. Okay, just to finish this part one, just a hint for this problem here. You have to use, well, you're dealing with N, so you have to use uh, So you have to use an estimation for the harmonic numbers. The one you can use is this one. This will be log t plus the Euler uh, Mascheroni constant plus O of 1 over t. Um, another way you can write it is if is if um, yes yeah another way you can write it is if you put these two terms together and then you have O of one over it should be T log T but you can put T if you like log T plus gamma okay and uh, yeah, if, if, if you don't want to put gamma, you can even, I mean, T goes to infinity anyway, so you can swallow the gamma if you like. But it, this is just a more precise asymptotic estimate, but you can put something like that. That, uh, that will work, okay? So, uh, so you have to use some of these stuff here to compute this, this kind of thing. Okay, so let me go to uh, item 2, and this will be a lot of work. But a lot of work, really. But not even compared with the stuff that we had to come. So what's the idea? So we want to prove item 2. In item 2 is about the total variation between two random variables, which are px of ny and px of ny um, with either y equals x to the alpha or y equals to the x to the alpha squared. So we want to compute the total variation of p x of n x to the alpha squared and px of uh, sorry x alpha n to the alpha squared and that did the case like uh, 1 over a power of a log of x okay um, so one way you can do it and that's a nice clever way that tau does it is that to compute that the probability so given so let E be an event so, that, so you have a certain event so you know that the total variation is the supreme of the difference of the probabilities uh, uh, given an event so you know that so maybe you should recall this so this this was a problem just after I defined total variation this is the soup over the E's of the probability of this guy here, I belong to E minus the probability of this guy here belonging to E. Okay? 
and I think it loses to two times this and is greater or equal than this, okay? So the idea is to uh, So again, y here can be either x to the alpha or x to the alpha squared. And the idea is to write this as um, is to write this as q of x, alpha, and e plus O of log of minus C of x. Okay, where Q is some quantity that depends on x, alpha, and e, but it doesn't depend on the choice that alpha equals x to the alpha or x to the alpha squared. Okay, so another way of thinking about it is that if you do the same calculations for y equals to x to the alpha, alpha times beta, and beta can be 0 or 1, or th the same calculations we would do here will hold for beta between, so, sorry, so you, another way to think of is to add, put x beta where well, beta is between 1 and alpha. We're actually only dealing with beta equals 1 or alpha. But in any case, uh, so that's another way of thinking about that you have a continuous parameter, and the idea is that you're going to derive a quantity, uh, 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 an estimate here where this Q doesn't depend on this beta. Okay? Now it becomes more uh, easy to grasp, I guess, at least for me. And then uh, if you then do the difference between two probabilities, you're just going to get O of log of minus C. If you derive something that doesn't depend whatsoever on the beta. Okay? So that's the idea, uh, and that's what tau does, and for that we need a bunch of computations, they're not, there is no uh, like a uh, very uh, clever idea behind this, it's just you compare whatever you, you can compare and you just open all the calculations until you get to a point where you can clearly apply proposition 28, which is about the oscillation. And that proposition 28 will, will get you to some place. At least there is a, um, is, is it, yeah. um, there is a certain idea, which is nice, which is a little idea, but they can only explain after we start doing something already. Okay. So, so, first of all, is um, okay, so this is a technical problem. Um, so, you will see again, you will see why we choose these certain powers. But uh, one, one extension of this problem is that this bound actually holds for every L between 1 and n, if you put L here. Why? Simply because uh, this total variation is less or equal, and it's an easy exercise, less or equal than the total variation when you put n and n here. Okay, it's because basically you're just uh, uh, adding more and more uh, uh, vari uh, variables uh, to compute the, um, um, the total variation. You can simply apply just a triangle inequality to show that. This total variation for L is in, increases with L, okay? Or is not decreasing with L. In particular, we have this, and this guy here is another N. Again, N is this, N is um, this guy here. So this is just some x to the minus c, okay? So by by the problem, we have that this is the same for, let me put here, it's the same for uh, g ohm of 2 to the L, uh, less than 2L, greater or equal than log of 0.6x, plus, uh, do I want to call it? 
Okay, so this is x to the minus c, so uh, O of x to the minus c. Uh, yes, but then this thing we apply the short enough time bound. We know what it is. It's just exponential of a minus log of 0 0.6 uh, of x squared divided by L. Yes, with a constant here, minus some constant, plus e to minus log of 0 0.6 uh, x and uh, some small constant plus x to the minus c, which comes from this. And this becomes 1.2 uh, divided by L. And uh, the best you can do is just put L equals 1. Uh, sorry, the worst you can do is just put L equals n. And n is like... Uh, um, uh, n is like 0 0.1 log on base 2 of x. Yes. Yeah, log on base 2 of x, so you have uh, uh, basically log x. Uh, so, it, so you have something like, um, so you have something like e to minus c log 1.2 x uh, divided by something like log x and therefore you cancel the one and you get 0 0.2 okay but that's why it's 0 0.6 because uh, we wanted still something so it had to be greater than 0 0.5 so 0 0.6 so what you get here is uh, e to minus um, some c and this guy well, we just Put the, the smallest power of the log as the bound, which is 0 0.2 x. Okay, that's what you get. So, okay, so we know how to bound the probability of this guy away from its supposed average uh, with the log, the power of the log. Great. Uh, so, if we define a um, Cranial, let's see, is a subset of the odd numbers to the power n uh, such that so a will be b odd to the n such that um, all its partial sums of the entries. Well, suppose, let me put uh, instead of L, L, this is L, so let me put here J. J minus 2J is less than log 0 0.6 of X. Okay, for J 1 to L. Okay, so all these partial sums, when you compare to the supposed average, loses to this thing. Okay, so in particular, what we showed here was that the probability of a n of n y uh, not being so this is last this was greater or equal not being in a n is um, there is a typo here. It's less than uh, this thing here, but this thing here loses to any power, 1 over power of the log, because it's an exponential, uh, so it's the case to 0. So it's the same as it is asking that a polynomial times an exponential, uh, decaying exponential is always bounded. So it's the same thing here. So this, so what I'm saying is that this is the log of x minus c and with a lot of spare room that's what tau used to say because you can put actually any power c here and you still have a lot of room okay so that's or minus c i'll be using this notation I'm switching between this notation and the other 
Okay, so that's what we prove. Okay, great. Again, this is the kind of a uh, tail uh, bound we want. Therefore, conditioning anything where I want to do now with this event um, is nice because I will get this tail uh, bound as a reminder, which is okay. So that's what we do. So let me erase. Let me erase everything up to this part. So by that bound, we'll be saying that the probability that this thing belongs to E, and I'm using this now as end, um, so if it doesn't belong, we have the same tail bound that I want, which is awesome, so this, uh, plus some O of log of minus C of X is exactly what we wanted to compute before. Okay, so that was the first reduction. We conditioned to a certain event. Great. Uh, well, let me do some bounds. So suppose I have an L which is less or equal than N. What happens we if we do this, well, by definition, this is 3 to the L, again, the same stuff we are seeing over and over, this is NY, and then we have an O of 3L, which is the FN function, which I'm not carrying for the moment. Um, then you can put this inside. Okay, great. And then you can see that uh, this stuff here um, will, I'm conditioning to this event here. So I'm assuming that, and assume, uh, let's say, an, I'm assuming n of ny belongs to AN. In particular, all the ALs have moduli uh, uh, satisfying this. Okay. Uh, in particular, this AL satisfies this bound here, that uh, it's close to 2L with an error with the power of the log. Okay. So, yes. So if I go ahead and replace this thing here, I will get 2L, let me do that, so 1 plus uh, O of 1, and this will be 2 to the 2 to the L, um, yes, plus a power which is was 0 0.6 of X, uh, yeah, that's the upper bound, and here would be a lower bound, would be something like 3 to the L. I want to keep this NY here. This would be 4 because it's 2 to the 2 to the L. And exponential of, uh, well, we can write that will be 2 to the to certain power, which you can write just as an exponential of 2 O of log of 0 0.6 of X. And the same here, you can write as the exponential of O or something. 
and then n y, and the worst case scenario is that y is x to the alpha. So uh, if I go ahead and replace by something like x to the alpha, well x is uh, um, sorry. The worst case scenario would be that l equals n, and n is like. Uh, so this would be something like um, x to 0 0.2, yeah, x to the power 0 0.2, this guy here. The worst case scenario for, for, for this, this, this is n y. So the worst case scenario for this bound would be something like 2 to the 2 to the n plus, let me replace that guy like by O of log of 0 0.6x. And uh, so that would be the largest you can get. And also the largest you can get here will be x to the alpha. But n is something, again, n, let me put n is 0 0.1 log of base 2 of x. So for this guy it would be something like x to 0 0.2. Okay, and this is close to 1, so I can put 1, will be the worst case scenario. So this would be something like 0 0.8. So this is just, uh, so we can erase this part here and just put, uh, O of X to, let's say, 0.7. I don't know, something like that. It's a small power. Okay. Um, yes. Yep, which is uh, three quarters L, but this is going to zero anyway, so NY epsilon of O of log. So it just completely swallow this into this part. I mean, I have to anyway. Okay. So that's what we conclude, okay? So what we're trying to do here is to estimate the first time that uh, this stuff here gets below x. That's what we're trying to do here. So, so, okay, so if S L N Y is less or equal than x, which is less than S L minus 1 N Y, suppose we have an estimation like this, that means that, well, at least this guy gets below x, and the guy right before it didn't. Okay, so, so, oh, so let's say L equals um, Tx of Ny. So, maybe this, <coughs> sorry, maybe this L is not this uh, L here, but anyway, suppose you have a certain L, but I mean, maybe this L is not in this range, maybe it's not the last week on the N, but I will show that it is, okay? So suppose you have an L like this, and this L is Tx of Ny, uh, then this, this, this inequality has to hold, but then by these bounds, okay, if I can apply these bounds, I would conclude that uh, Tx of Ny, which is L, Uh, should be log. I mean, basically, that you just take uh, from here and using these bounds, you just take log on both sides. So the question is, okay, so, uh, so by this estimate, we conclude that we get below x whenever I put L here, so by this estimate here, up to this point, 
and conclude that if I put L equals to this quantity here, I will get below x. Okay. Okay. Is this quantity here uh, less or equal to n? So I can indeed apply this quantity, this estimate. Is that less or equal to n? If 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 this quantity here is less or equal to n, then you could definitely put it here and apply the inequality and see that I get below x. Okay. So that's the question. So is this less or equal to n for x large? And the answer is yes, because n y is at most x to the alpha cube. So this would be uh, uh, at most uh, alpha cubed minus one over two um, log of x, okay? And this grows like again log of x, and this is much smaller, uh, much lower than log of x. But there is an alpha cubed minus one here, and if alpha is very close to one, I can make that coefficient as small as I want, and therefore it will be less or equal to n asymptotically. And then for yes, the answer is yes, it's just a calculation. So this number is uh, 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 less or equal to n, and if I put, uh, and therefore this is a true estimate. So therefore, for every uh, 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 guy in this random variable, the, the estimated uh, first passage below x has this bound. So it indeed gets below x uh, 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 if we condition to this event, and um, and the time it gets below x has this approximation. Okay. So again, not doing rigorously, but it can show that. So that that's the point. If if you condition to this, then uh, and indeed get uh, below x. And uh, the estimation is this, okay? Um, so prob problem okay. uh, probability of t x of n y belonging to i y, uh, we define what y i is. So show this where i y is the interval log of y over x divided by log of four over three. So basically I'm doing this guy and I'm removing something that's greater asymptotically than this. So I'm putting here uh, log of zero point eight x and then the largest it can be which is y to the alpha x uh, yes y to the alpha x and uh, over log of four thirds plus something that grows faster than the error term okay and it's not hard to show that uh, the probability of the x, y, and y belong to this interval is like this, okay. Uh, uh, yes. So again, this problem is subjected to this context here. Yeah. Is not by itself. Okay, uh, so now it comes the idea so uh, uh, so I know that L, if L is in here and A N satisfy this condition I have this in particular asymptotically I will have uh, 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 that this is true, so I end up concluding that, before I say what the idea is, I end up concluding that, that maybe I should switch pens, I end up concluding that the probability that Px, Ny, 
belongs to E equals a triple uh, event, which is, um, it's right there, is probability of Px in Y in E and An of NY and and uh, Tx, yes, Tx of NY in uh, IY by the problem, plus a, a mirror, which is log O minus C. Okay. So that's what I end up concluding. Okay, so now it comes the idea. So that now we can, I think I can erase this. The idea. Well, the idea is uh, more or less uh, uh, simple. Suppose you have a certain orbit, and this is uh, the picture, depiction of the orbit. And in here, at this point, I get below x. So this guy here is, let's see, let's say equal to x. This ball here. Okay, so it's starting with ny, and let's say equal to x. So I have to take a certain number of steps to get below x. So if I start here, so I started here, but if I start here, I know exactly what the number of steps I need to get to, to walk to get to x. Okay, because that's the first one that gets below x. So what I'm saying is that uh, if tx of ny equals l, then tx of s, let's say, um, L minus something, let's say J of NY. So I, I am almost at L, but J steps to get to L. So L would be this guy here. Um, then this is definitely J, because this guy would be L minus J, so there is J steps to get to L. Okay, so that's true. But indeed, the opposite also happens here. If this is true, that means if I'm here and I know that the first time I get to here, then I know that by the estimations I did, that starting from here would be impossible to get to uh, none of these numbers. The point is none of these numbers will be below x, okay? in this context, so I can actually do the opposite as well. So that's the idea. So, uh, so that would, would allow me to uh, um, make this event, uh, to have two descriptions from this event. So let me define BL as the event, uh, with that event there, Tx and Y, equals L and Px and Y belongs to E and A and X belongs to A N. Okay, that's the event BL. Okay. So what I want to do is to define a certain N prime. So let me define N prime equals, now n prime would be always this, alpha minus 1 over 100 log x okay so this would be a sufficiently close to 0 and this is 100 here just to make sure that everything works fine um, okay so what you see is that one thing you see is that uh, 
Asymptotically, n prime is less or equal than the minimum of i y, which is less than the maximum of the interval i y, which is less. Uh, this guy here is also asymptotically less than n. Okay. Yeah, if alpha is also sufficiently close uh, uh, to 1. I mean, this guy here would be something like alpha minus 1 divided by this, and this is alpha minus 1 divided by 100. And 100 is greater than log of 4 thirds, okay? Okay, so that's, so, 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 so now my claim is the following. So let me erase, you can write the claim here, claim. Claim is that BL, the event BL, this event here, is also equal to this other event. to E and the so I'm not saying that it implies I'm saying that it's equal if n prime less so you could an L less so you could an N in particular if L uh, belongs to uh, the interval I Y so and that's where we consider it because the interval, oh, this is, the interval i, y is here, so really want just to consider L's in this interval, but it works for in n prime up to n, okay? That's the claim. So let's prove this claim. Well, and the proof of the claim is very simple. Well, if you have that S L N Y less or equal than X less than S L minus one of N Y. Well, we can, well, well, I do know that if this happens by this implication here, if this happens, that that happens. So event B L definitely implies, um, definitely, Oh, there is a parenthesis here that was missing. Uh, yeah, that's the first guy that gets. So this, yeah, yeah. So that that will be exactly this guy here. So definitely, BL implies this event by the previous uh, observation. I just need to show that this event implies BL. So if this happens, it means that. Well, uh, if I start with NY, if this happens, if I start with NY, then definitely at L, I get below uh, uh, X, and it's the first time, at least locally, there, that I get below X. So that means that we have this inequality, at least. But then from the bound, but from the bound we had, we had the bound SL, and y uh, equals to e of o of log of 0.6 x three quarters of l and y. From this bound, we deduce that l, this this l should be 
log n y x divided by log of 4 over 3 plus perhaps I didn't mention this but whenever I use log without the base base I mean natural log Maybe another class I mentioned this. Yes. So, uh, um, okay, so uh, so L is this. So that happens, but but we do know that Tx, again, Ny, so we do know that this equals uh, the same asymptotic bound. We, we did this calculation before. Plus go with something. So that... Uh, um, so that implies that... Uh, plus O of 0.6x so that implies that Tx and Y equals L plus that O. Of course. I want to show that Tx of N Y equals L. That, that will finish the thing. Uh, but this asymptotically is greater than L minus N prime. So L, so in this example here, uh, this was 1, this was L, and this was L minus M prime. So I know that if I start from here, I get below X only here. So maybe I got below X in other places here. But if I know that I didn't, that I had to get below X in some place here, then I have to, I, then I know that I must get below X in here because in here there is no number below x. So I just need to show that tx of ny is greater than this. But this is greater than this asymptotically. By the choice of, of n prime, uh, uh, n prime is it's like log, and this is the small power of the log, but this is grows faster, so this will hold asymptotically, and therefore for large x. Uh, and therefore, this is true, so this implies that Tx of Ny equals L. So therefore, my claim is true. Okay? Almost there. Um, so then we conclude that the probability of Px Ny belonging to E equals the sum of L in IY of the probability of BL. And I know that BL is not only this, but also equal to this. Okay, I will use these two representations in a moment. Plus O of log minus C of X. Great. So, so if BL occurs, okay, so if, what happens if BL occurs? Well, if BL occurs, then, I, and, okay, if BL occurs um, for some L in this interval, so in particular in this range, um, then let's say m is s of l minus n prime of ny. Okay, so we have an estimation for this. This is O of log of 0.6x, 3 quarters l and ny, or l minus n prime, sorry. So let me rewrite this 
as uh, four quarters, four thirds, sorry, n prime. And this will be then uh, uh, four, uh, three quarters uh, L and Y. But this part here, well, L is, because this event equals that one, okay, L is is equal to tx and y. So this is tx and y, but by the same asymptotic with the same reminder term, this I can replace this guy here and an error of the same order here by just uh, uh, this guy here, by an error of the same order is just tx and y of and y times an error which is of this, this same order here. Okay. But this is just comparable to x. That's the very first time that it gets below x. So you can erase again and just put x. Okay. Now again, if I get a, an error term that is, grows faster than this, I get that then I conclude, the asymptotic at least, that then M satisfies this. So if BL occurs for the null in this interval, in particular satisfying this, um, then we conclude that M lies in this, uh, in this range. So let me now define uh, E prime as the set of M odd such that Tx of m equals n prime. Again, n prime is fixed as this guy here. I always remember this. Px of m belongs to E. And that inequality holds true. Let's see. X. So let me put here a star. And the star is true. Okay. Okay. So T and X, uh, T and T X of N Y has to be a nail. Uh, 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 what I do do is, yeah. Oh, yes. So Tx of something has to be n prime. Px of something has to belong to E. And I have a, another condition. Okay? So this set is, is putting the something here, the something here. And we know that if this thing happens, then this thing happens. So therefore, we conclude that uh, uh, if we, in addition, add because I'm in a, additionally add this thing over all these things, but that's no constraint because these things implies this additionally uh, star inequality. So I conclude that BL, so, so this event, then, uh, look, sorry, this set here, then BL, oh, this event, I guess. Um, okay, but if it's an event, No, this is a set, sorry. I shouldn't use the, the letter E anyway, but that's, this is a set. Then, um, BL is the event that S of L minus N prime of NY belongs to E prime. 
So this guy here, which is the guy that I want to put, uh, this guy is the M, and that M has to satisfy the Tx of M equals M prime, Px of M belongs to E, and we have this already equality, and this is a uh, plus an additional uh, uh, thing. Okay. The nice part now is that, that what Tau says is that E prime doesn't depend on Y. Okay? So Y could be X to the alpha or X to the alpha squared, but this guy doesn't depend on Y, only depends on X. So again, it could be confusing because Y depends on X, so this depends on X, then depends on Y. It's really, you can throw these uh, doubts away when you put X. Uh, y equals to x to alpha beta, and beta can be anything between 1 and alpha, and what I'm saying is independent of this continuous parameter, that would make more sense. If you, if you really think about it, uh, 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 that's the important part, that E prime doesn't depend, so E prime does not depend on y being x alpha or x alpha squared. Okay. So let me maybe raise everything up to this point. So we are almost finishing up. Um, and so I want to, now I want to, um, so this was nice, but I want to reform this N into N mine into, um, um, yes, into L minus N prime. And it's, well, well, the event, the event AN belongs to N, to AN, definitely, because since it's about all its partial summations being close, up to I being close to 2I, uh, it implies the, the smaller event, so it definitely implies uh, uh, this event here. And, well, this event here, well, what's the difference between this event and this event here? It means that at least one of these partial sums from i greater than L minus N prime is not close to 2 times uh, 2i, okay? Which means that belongs to the opposite, uh, belongs to the complement of one of these uh, of these. Uh, these sets here, but we know by the previous estimate that the probability of, of this event here not being satisfied since then since the probability of a um, i and y not being in a i, we show this loses to the log x to, to some small power we can then drop this thing in that estimate and we conclude that uh, the probability to it, so we have, yeah, we'll use that in a moment, so we can drop uh, yes, so we can drop so the probability of PL equals the probability of this new event, S L minus N prime and Y in Z prime and 
and uh, an, sorry, l minus n prime y in al minus n prime uh, plus o of log of x to minus some. Okay, just a technical problem. Uh, so we, we, we prove this, uh, 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 then you get this. But actually, we will need something stronger. We actually showed that uh, this was uh, uh, e to minus some small constant log of 0 0.2x. And this is less than log to minus, let's say, capital A of x for every a positive, okay? Because, simply because, well, if you define this as a, let's say, a y, um, if you change the system, this is better. Uh, if, if this guy is a y, then this would just, uh, 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 sorry, if this guy is a y, this will be just the power of y, so therefore, uh, an exponential is always decay faster than uh, a polynomial increases. So if you multiply them both, this is going to be bounded. So this bound is going to hold. And we actually prove this, and we're actually going to need this. So this thing here is, uh, since by, by this bound we get this, we can actually separate this thing and put some capital A here, which can be as large as we wish. And the point is, I'm going to use this thing by replacing in here, so I will then have to summate this uh, O of A with this, uh, over this index set Y, I, Y, so uh, I, Y, but then a simple calculation tells you that I, Y, we call that I, Y was basically, maybe this should be this, I, Y was basically, roughly, something like log of y over x and then something like log of y alpha over x and with cer certain error terms uh, here and here and a certain constant multiplying here and there so it was roughly like this so it's basically uh, um, alpha if x is alpha then it's basically alpha minus 1 uh, if y is x to the alpha, this is alpha minus 1 over x. If x if y is x to the alpha squared, it will be alpha squared minus 1 more uh, here than in log x. Yes. So basically, you have just, uh, so the cardinality, so this is basically something like a constant log x to another constant log x. So this is basically, uh, so if you do the calculation here, you will get something like, alpha minus 1, and it's only the odds we are taking, uh, over to uh, log, and there is an O, which you can put inside here, 1 plus O of 1 over x, uh, alpha minus 1 over 2 log y, okay, so that's the cardinality of this set, so you're going to multiply something with log y, times something which is log x, but could be at any power, so therefore this wins, okay? And there was a log x on the outside here, which is small power, so I take that small power anyway. Okay, so we actually needed now this full force of this bound here. Okay, so, so then we can go ahead and replace. We can say that the probability of px and y belonging to e is now the sum is this so now this is almost final now there is no more um, yeah there is no more reductions O of log of minus C of x. Okay, so uh, let me erase that part.
Yeah. So we still have y here in the dependency and y in there. So we want to remove that in a way. So how can we do that? Um, and that's what we do. Uh, so first of all, we just uh, write explicitly what this probability is. So probability of px from ny in E will be equal to um, sum of L in Y. Uh, yes, and then probability of okay, and then um, sum of B and AL nine is n prime, and then sum of M in E prime of two to the minus B, three L minus n prime divided by M minus um, yeah F L minus n prime of B, and in here is. Um, 1 over h of y, where h of y is um, is the sum of the j's and uh, y, y alpha odd, 1 over j, and this is 1 plus o of 1 over x, by that uh, estimation I gave you before. This is just log of this minus log of that, which gives the alpha minus 1, dividing by 2 because you're only taking the odds. Okay. And why this is true? Because, well, if this is true because uh, if S minus L minus uh, of some guy, let's say NY, equals some M that belongs to E prime, so I'm um, in this context here, uh -huh. and uh, a uh, l minus n prime of n y is some b. Okay, well that happens if and only if. So uh, you just solve for n, but because this guy would depend on n y by a formula, you just solve it. And you uh, for n y, and you conclude that n y has to be this number here. So if you have this, and this happens, then you solve. You use the formula for the the s, the uh, the iterate of the uh, the, the s map. And you solve for ny and you get this. So ny has to be a single guy. Once you have a b and an m, it has to be this guy here. Okay. Well, we're using the log distribution, so the probability will be just one over it times uh, divided by the, the density by the, the harmonic number here over all the odd interval, odd integers from y to y over alpha, which is this uh, hy here. So that will be the probability, exactly. So now we open everything up, all the calculations, and we have a split. Okay, another technical problem. Uh, first of all, I forgot to say that, well, okay, if that happens, then you solve for n, y, you get this. But, well, this has to be an integer, so I have to condition this here. So I have to condition that 3L minus n prime divides m minus f l minus n prime of b. Okay, have the condition to that. Uh, uh, but now note that m minus f l minus n prime of b is basically m plus o of 3 to the l minus n prime. But m is something like x uh, times uh, a certain uh, times something greater than 1, if you recall the estimate that I wrote here for m. So this is basically, this is really equal to an x plus something bigger than 1. 
and this here uh, is the most n minus n prime, which is just some small power of x. So if I isolate m, I get something like a small power times m. Okay, so I could then uh, replace uh, I could then replace this thing here, and you get something like a, 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 a small power. So uh, doing all this, we get finally that P of Px and Y and E will be that sum there. Again, y, y is just the sum, so it's asymptotically to this. Let me write it. Let me give me some more space. So in here we have, so already replacing by this O here, so that would be uh, um, 1 plus O of x to the minus c divided by alpha minus 1 over 2 log y and then here 2 to the minus b 3 to the l minus n prime divided by m so another way of writing this is the following is um, this bit here can be rewritten as the expectation, maybe it's right in red, in red, this is the expectation of 1. So there is this 2 to the minus b here, which is exactly uh, probably the density of the geom geometric uh, variable. Um, so this would be the indicator of this being in this set times CL of CRAC of L minus N prime. Okay, and why this is true? Well, what, what is C CL will be certain function applied in the CRAC. Uh, uh, um, Thing. Oh, I also forgot to put here the O, which in here I also forgot. So this bit is that, so I have to tell you what this function CL is. Uh, maybe we are two. More is a way to finish. Okay, uh, where, what is the function CL? CL is the function that goes from Z, 3L minus N prime Z, to R plus, we define by CL of some number J is just 3 to the L minus N prime summation of the M to the M prime, such that M is actually J, um, 1, 3L minus n prime, and this is 1 over j. Okay, let's see if that holds true, because, well, the first few conditions of that event, which is okay, we have this probability, and then you have to summate over the e primes, such that uh, m minus f of this uh, uh, b um, uh, is divisible by this, that means that m is congruent to this number mod 3l minus n prime, but if b is the geom variable, which it is because you're summating all over this condition set with the same density here, 
this guy here becomes F composed with the geom, which is the Sirac map I defined, L minus N prime, and I'm summating all over the, the M's such that in E prime, which are congruent to that particular uh, guy. So that would be exactly the Sirac, and I will, but instead I'm putting 3L minus N prime, which I put in isolated there, and I'm summating 1 over M, so I, I should summate here 1 over J, okay? So that's the, yeah, so that is the function. So this is just another way of writing that function. Okay, as an exercise, realize that this is true. I already said it, but it's so problem. And this is actually a lemma in Tau's paper, it's not too hard. Uh, show that with this context, with this uh, setting, uh, CL of J is bounded by 1. Okay. Um, yes, uh, and the hint you have to use. Again, you have to use the estimate 1 over i, i less or equal than t is basically 1 plus o of 1 over t log t, and so use that and the Chinese reminder theorem. Okay. At some point, you have to collect a bunch of conditions over bunch of residue classes um, and then you use the Chinese reminder theorem to couple all of them together in just one residue class. Okay? You can read so I'm in the middle of the proof of that uh, in, in Tao's paper. It's not that hard to show. Okay. Okay, so if that is bounded then uh, um, Basically, you can remove this term, because to remove this term, you have to estimate uh, this guy against uh, the, the indicator set of the geom not being in that set. But again, by the turn off bound, uh, uh, that would lose to uh, uh, a small logarithmic po uh, power, uh, in particular, um, um, yes, uh, and this is O of log of, yeah, the turn-off bound, the, the full strength of the turn-off bound will give me something like, um, Yeah, yeah. Now I would I won't need to use the full strength of the turn off bound because I would have um, um, uh, this thing here on the outside and this log here would actually help me. But anyway, so what I'm saying is that the expectation just CL of Sirac, which is without the indicated function here, uh, would then be. Uh, equal to the expectation with the geom function. Uh, plus some uh, all that this is not on this set, basically. Uh, probability that this is not on this set. The geom is not on ALN prime. But by the turn off bound, turn off type bound, uh, this loses to uh, uh, something like uh, exponential of minus a small power of the log, which loses to one over the log over any constant. So this, this is actually log of minus a of x for every a positive. And this, this bit here is by the turn off bound. This, this, this bit comes from the sharing of the type bound. So if I replace this this 
this uh, this bit here by this plus this O, uh, I would add O here in this summation, but there is another log dividing, so it could be it could, it could even be some small power here, but you, you can put in big power actually. Um, so basically, we conclude. Uh, Okay, okay, so basically, so, so we removed this L minus N prime here. So now we have that the probability Px in E is 1 plus O of X minus C, alpha minus 1 over 2, log of Y, uh, summation of L in I alpha I Y um, yeah, maybe I put uh, the wrong estimation for the cardinality of I Y but uh, before and I think I put alpha minus 1 over 2 in the cardinality of I Y uh, it's not this divided by log of 4 over 3 anyway We'll see that in a moment. Um, so what we get is this, and so now we can remove the indicator function. So it'll be just E of CL Sirac of L minus N prime uh, plus O of log minus C of X. Okay. So, so, so that's just by this estimate. So let me just replace already here. Let me replace already right here what that uh, thing is. That thing is the summation of Z three to the L minus N prime Z CLJ and the probability of CIAC L minus N prime equal to J. Okay. Okay, so now I'm just erasing this and we finish, finally. So the cardinality of I, uh, Y, is alpha minus one log of four thirds. It's log of four thirds. That's why I did, the way I defined there was this constant. And I, I think I put two in the previous bound. I wrote for estimate. I wrote for this. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. One plus O of log of minus C of X. wrong in the previous time no that, that's the that correct text of okay uh, uh. The cardinality. So, uh, so what we realize is that the following: if I prove that this bit here can be written in a way 
that it doesn't depend on um, can be written in a way that it doesn't depend it doesn't depend on um, Well, sorry, it doesn't depend on L. So I want to write this in a way that this doesn't depend on L, so that I summate over all the L's and just multiply by the cardinality. And if I do so, then I multiply by the cardinality, I cancel this log, I cancel this alpha minus 1, and I get just something which is a constant, uh, 1 over 1 plus o over x minus c, and something that doesn't depend on y anymore, because if I put something that doesn't depend on that L here, then I can move this term outside, and then I summate over all the L's, and then you, do, you don't depend on Y anymore, because the summation can be estimated without uh, Y, uh, because it would cancel with this Y here. Yeah, because when you summate this, you get this, and then we have this cancellation. There is no Y in this story anymore. Okay. So, all we need to do is to remove dependency. Depend dependency on L. Okay? Um, and how can we do this? Well, then we, uh, uh, then we appeal to, so we use the oscillation proposition. So the oscillation proposition says that uh, whenever I summate this, I can replace L minus both. So, so, so note, for instance, the L minus N prime is greater or equal to N prime. Again, asymptotically. In particular, I want to replace L minus N prime by N prime alone. Okay, so this, if C was 1, this would, would just be the, the computation of all the, 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 the... This would be just 1, again, because we just compute the, 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 the probability of this being J for all the J's here, so this would be 1. Okay, but by the oscillation proposition, we know, uh, uh, we know, so, so proposition 28 tells us that uh, if I do this, If I do this, this is n prime minus l, and this is uh, the way the way I, I actually this was the way I wrote it, which using the a problem that I had stated just before the proposition, um, this was actually n prime congruent to j mod. 3n prime, that is m a, where a can be anything. Oh, not n, that would be uh, the smallest one, which would be n prime, but n prime to a certain power, but n prime is like, uh, 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 um, like log x, so it's log x to a certain power, to any power so for all A positive. Okay, that's what we know. Okay. So now note that, well, what happens is that um, uh, a CL is like 1, is over 1. So, yeah, this is what it's saying, CL is 1 of O of 1. So if I do this sum 
here would be the magic form. So th this is what we have. So if I put uh, C um, L of J here, okay, and I put uh, uh, C L of J here, okay, and I do this thing, then I can definitely cancel the C L uh, isolate this. This is all of one. So we definitely lose to this thing, okay, which loses to that, okay. So in particular, I could, and uh, which loses to any big power, and uh, which is good, we're already dividing by something here, and the cardinality here is like log, so a big power here would be put together with this, so I would prefer this small power, see? And so, so therefore, I can replace in there, so probability of Px of Ny in E is equal to 1 plus O of x to minus C over alpha minus 1 over 2 of Y, sum of the L's in Iy. And then that probability I can replace by... Uh, by C L uh, J uh, oh sum sorry sum J and uh, Z uh, Z L minus N prime of Z C L J and it can replace by the probability of C -rack of N prime be equal to uh, J mod 3m prime. Okay? Plus the same size of error. Okay? Okay, oh, so, so, wait, 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 something wrong here. Okay, uh, uh that was the, the, the probability itself. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So what I'm doing here, let, let me open this thing one more time using, oh, there is a 3 that I forgot here. 3, 2, n minus prime minus my L. So if I then use a definition, I will have a one more sum here, and then we'll have some cancellation with some terms in there, so I get just 3 to the n prime. So we get just uh, uh, an extra summation over that m's, m's in e prime, uh, uh, so maybe I should give me some space here. So let me replace this by m in e prime and m is j mod uh, 3l minus n prime, and this is 1 over m, let me give some extra space here. Uh, so this is uh, 1 uh, over log of x to some small power. And that would be probability of Sirac n prime being j mod 3m prime. And there is a 3 to the n prime that I forgot. Yeah, so if you realize, well, this guy here inside, what is it? Well, if I just want to compute all the n's in E prime, such that uh, in summate all these numbers, um, uh, uh, well, this thing here, that's what I'm trying to say, this thing here is just the summation of m in E prime, of these numbers, e n prime over m probability of Sirac n prime equals m mod 3 n prime. Okay? And that is a sum as a stuff that doesn't depend on L anymore, and that's exactly what we wanted to prove. 
And why is this true? Because, well, if we want to summate this, what you can do is, well, first you decide a certain residue class, which is, uh, oh, this is supposed to be a 3. 3L minus N prime, and for all this, uh, for this residue class, you summate all, over all the M's in that residue class. So this is exactly it's just to summate you know, over all the set. Okay? And this now doesn't depend on N, so, uh, so now we can cancel everything. We get 1 plus O of X to the minus C. We have 1 half, and then we had the cardinality, which was log of 4 over 3. And then we have this, this, this red part in here, and then oh, there was a o, o of log minus c of x here, plus o of log minus c of x here, and then finally this this part here. Uh, um, well, and this 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 guy he can be swallowed by the log again, so you can remove this guy if you wish. And again, now this doesn't depend on y anymore. It depends on x, but it doesn't depend if y is x to the alpha, x to the alpha squared. So, so that finishes the proof. Okay. So it's a bit long proof, very technical. Uh, there are more technical proofs to come. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed, and see you next time.